my cup of tea. As I've said, I'm really using that phrase mainly because I want another cup of tea, so I might. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and today we are doing a daily reading vlog, which I've picked the perfect day to do that with because it is overcast and miserable looking. So what better way to spend the day than inside reading some books? Sounds absolutely fantastic. And today's reading has been provided by Your Paper Quest. So thank you so much. Your Paper Quest is a independent UK bookish subscription box and they focus on self-published authors so indie authors I really like this because most of the other bookish subscription boxes you get always focus on the newest book that's going to be coming out a book that's predicted to do really really well and this is highlighting some indie authors authors that you may not have heard of otherwise another thing that I love about your paper quest is that the theme and the genre changes each month which is another thing that I don't see often if at all with bookish boxes subscriptions. But the fact that the theme will change each month with this is great, especially as someone that I read across multiple different genres and so this is a great way to find new authors within those genres and having it actually change month to month. But let's have a look at what we actually get in here. We do get a spoiler card which introduces the theme and so this one is September's book box and we have some grounded fantasy novels telling stories about things that are not where they should be, which is a really interesting theme. i not something I would have thought of. We get an overview of the two books that are provided. This book description box, because it's self-published authors, you get two books that total up to 500 pages, which I think is awesome. Then we also have the QR code for the book club. Having the subscription to your paper quest also enables you to be a part of their book club, meaning you can talk with other subscribers and ask the authors questions about the books that you're reading, which I love. You also get some bookish bits with it. This one is a poem that goes with one of the books. We also have a letter from the other author in here about the book and you get two bookmarks both with a quote from each of the respective books. So we have one which is how could a mere child know how to cure a disease like that? A disease that nobody had seen or heard of before. That sounds really good. And then the other one is but she was Princess Celine Telema greatest blade dancer of her generation and she had nothing left to lose. Ooh, I like that. That gives you like a nice little snippet of what you're going to get. And the books. Let's have a look. So we have two books and I'm loving the covers of these. I have to admit, self-published authors do get the best cover work, I do think. They do look awesome. Loving this. This book is Mordex. This is by Mark Mekaricher and this is Creatures of Flynn book one. So we have the start of a series, which I'm very excited about. On the back it says, an unstoppable disease, a fanatical doctor, and nightmare obsession. Sounds really good. So we've got a deadly plague that rips through a village, unexpected salvation arise in Adam, a bright-eyed novice healer with hidden gift who vanishes as quickly as he came. Ooh, okay. We have a witch's dying word, and the world of healers is changing. We've got a royal doctor, Lady Hall, is on the quest to perfect humanity. Oh, this sounds really good. I'm very intrigued by this. Don't think I've read anything quite like that before, actually. That sounds really unusual and interesting. Inside, we have this gold foil stamp as part of the Your Paper Quest books. And this one also has a bookish map. I love a bookish map, especially when you've got fantasy books. It is amazing to see where our main characters actually are. So I'm loving that. And then the second book we're going to be reading for today is Troop of Shadows. And this is by Jennings Zasbrinski. And this is Once the Heir to an Empire, Now Just a Shadow. The throne stolen by her traitorous brother, chased to the edge of the world, Celine has only a blade, a talent for slaughter, and four elite blade dancer bodyguards to her name. One day, Celine will reclaim her birthright, but she has more immediate problems. Foods run out, shelter is scarce, and her followers are on the verge of mutiny. She can't even communicate with the strange inhabitants of this alien land, the so-called humans who wield guns, wear shoes, and seem completely incapable of shifting the colour of their skin. Oh, that sounds interesting. But then she captures Copper, a down-on-his-luck human mercenary who happens to speak her language. She seizes a razor-thin opportunity to reverse her fortunes. She has the bladecraft, he claims to have the connections, 
and the frontier will never have enough mercenaries. So a bit more like I would say classic fantasy trope where we have the princess that's trying to reclaim her throne but make it slightly different with beings that they actually are. Very intrigued by this. Once again we have a gold stamp from Paper Quest. This one doesn't seem to have a map. No, it doesn't have a map. That's okay. I like the paper quality of this. It's really nice. Both of these books have really good paper quality and the font sizing is actually really readable. I like this. This is going to be a good time I think actually. Okay so that's today's plans. I want to be reading both of these. I'm really intrigued. I've not heard of either of these authors and I'm intrigued to see what I think. I think to be honest I'm probably going to start off with Mordax. This, I don't know, there's something about it that seems really interesting and intriguing to me like with the disease and everything that sounds really good don't get me wrong i'm still intrigued by this one but i feel like it's going to be more like classic fantasy just with a different spin on the setting so it'll be interesting to see what i think of these i do have a few things i still need to do today i've got to water my plants a little bits like that and i will be updating you on my progress with these books so that is the plans for today let me know how you've been what you've been up to have you heard of your paper quest would you be interested another thing that's great with your paper quest is they they actually have monthly interviews with the authors so they do have a youtube channel so i have them linked below talking about their ideas behind it how they came up with it and all of those things so i think that's awesome i love how this book box you're not getting just the books you're also getting access to a book club and learning more about the authors being able to interact with them i think that is such an amazing idea but this is uk based so just bear that in mind but i'll have everything linked below for you and yeah let's give this a try have you heard of either of these authors? Do you read many independent authors? I know it's something that I want to do more of so this is perfect for that. In general I have to admit I, I mainly stick to published authors. Sometimes on Kindle Unlimited I will read indie authors off of there so is that something that you do a lot of? Do you try and mix up your reading? Anyway that's enough rambling. Let's get to reading and I will update you when I've made some progress with Mordax. later it's actually only been like i think hour and a bit two hours this is so easy to read like the writing style of it all is just so easy like it's easy to fly through it does not take much effort to sit there and read this book which i am loving i'm now up to chapter 12 page 146 which proves how fast i'm reading this don't get me wrong i normally average about a page a minute but this is going even quicker than that part of that is just the way this is formatted because it's really easy to read on the eyes but also like I said the writing style of it is is really good. We do start off with a plague that's the thing that we open up into so we have this kind of sleepy village setting which I'm really enjoying and our main character is Harriet we're seeing everything from her perspective and we start off with this plague which they've named the grit going around we get quite vivid descriptions of this plague and it's a little bit gruesome I'm not gonna lie but it's really interesting and it has a nice old timey feel to this village like I'm enjoying the setting and atmosphere of this book. We do have a town witch called Polly and she's been trying to help but also things are going wrong and dreams are a really big thing in this book and how it starts getting nightmares all to do with certain things that Polly has said. It's a really unusual one and at the start of the book we also meet a character called Adam who is a novice healer who arrives in the town and with being able to help and is able to do things that people like well how are you able 
to sort this all out when we don't even know what's going on like why are you so good at this and it starts off a lot of suspicion around him especially when he just disappears not long after so it's a really unusual thing that's happening but also what's progressed in the plot line is a thing called Mordant sleep. So it said on the back about how the royal doctor Lady Hawks and Lady Hawks is creating this thing called Mordant sleep, which she's kind of getting the villagers to have and it's a way of making them really rest, be really peaceful and enjoy everything and it's done so well that Harriet, our main character, has taken it and she's like, yeah, this is great. It's kind of like got a drug-like quality to it, almost like an opium effect. And I feel like that's kind of, I, mean, I don't know if that's where the influence is, but based on like the old time feel to this book and like the plague and everything that's going on, I feel like Mordant Sleep could easily be like an opium, what am I thinking of? On the same level as that in terms of the way it's done, like they seem really relaxed and they do go to sleep and they sleep really deeply and everything. Like it's a really unusual one that's going on. I'm really enjoying that and then at the end so we have chapter 10 just finishing up chapter 11 there have been loads of reveals we have adam that's back but harriet is a lot more wary of him because of these dreams that she's been having she has these suspicions about him and there's just so much going on and then right at the end of 11 which i'm not gonna lie i did the update because i'm about halfway through and i really wanted to update when i got halfway but i also really want to know what's going on because we've now had the appearance of these creature like beings i've got no idea what's going on there i'm really curious and at the end of 11 the thing that Harriet says I'm like oh that's interesting that's what I'm enjoying about this book like I'm loving the setting of this book the atmosphere is there for me it's a really easy read like is this a new favorite no but is this an easy read and something that I'm finding intriguing and is keeping me hooked and wanting to turn the pages yes like I'm enjoying it for that I'm curious about this more than sleep I feel like it's a lot more sinister and there's a lot more things going on than what we first seem to get this is also a book that really doesn't take much brain power like and I like books like this especially to break up the other things that I'm reading especially if I'm on early shifts at work this is a sort of book that I would want to read for that because I'm up really early I'm tired I still still want to read this is the perfect sort of book for that in my opinion like I'm really enjoying this this is going really well I'm really intrigued and I just love how easily this is my bookmark just fell out it's just it just reads so easily and I'm just intrigued with it and everything that's going on honestly chapter 11 was like so much going on. it makes you question what is going on with Harriet because she seems so unsettled like she's not as stable as she was at the start of this book and I have a feeling that's because of more dense sleep we also have this thing called Flynn Flynn, from what I can work out, is kind of like your energy, your soul almost, the thing that keeps you going and that is a big part within this book so I'm intrigued to know a bit more of what's going on back there but it's referenced a lot. The Flynn is kind of just a part of you, reacts to your emotions, reacts when you're ill. It does seem to be like your inner energy so that that's also interesting but yeah I just I'm intrigued to see how this is going to go because Harriet's sister Alice is also questioning Harriet herself and being like you know what what's wrong with you what's going on the thing that I'm linking that back to is Mordant Sleep also Adam's an interesting character I don't know how this is gonna play out like I feel like he's a lot nicer than what people believe and I think maybe it's just a case of like wrong time wrong place if that makes sense so I don't know I'm really enjoying it this is good it's interesting and it's an easy read so I think I'm gonna read a little bit more maybe finish it I think maybe we'll have a snack have a banana or something finish this and then do some lunch before we start the next one I think that's the plan I'm really enjoying this though it is the perfect day for it it is just so miserable out there right I'm just I've rambled I've lit that's literally all I've been saying is that's you know this is good that's that and that's what happens when I have a book that I'm enjoying and it's not like really in depth there's not like loads of things for me to like really get into the nitty gritty but it's just an easy enjoyable read and that's all I wanted from today so that is perfect also I've just realized like on the cover you've got all these different elements and stuff and that's creepy as hell. I'm liking that. I feel like it's not too creepy but there's like a nice little bit of spooky factor which is perfect considering I've been in the mood to go into all of my spooky reads. I feel like this is a nice transitional book. Anyway, right, let me stop rambling and actually get back to reading.
now finish Mordax. This was really fun. I would definitely be interested in continuing on with the series. Like I say, for those early morning shifts where I just need something easy to read, this is really good for it. And the plot twists that were coming at the second half of this book, oh my gosh, to the point where I had to make notes because there was just so much going on. I really enjoyed it. I think the pacing was good throughout this book. It definitely picked up towards the end, but that was good because obviously the reveals are coming and I enjoyed all of that. At the end of chapter 12, so obviously I, where I last left you, we had got up to chapter 12. At the end of that chapter, we had learned more about the creatures, which I mentioned that had kind of appeared and that was really good. That was a really interesting spin on things. I enjoyed that. It kind of reminded me of some older YA books that I read when I was like, 13, 14 and enjoyed that. It was like a nice nostalgia callback to it and I think that's what I've enjoyed about this. It feels like a nostalgia YA fantasy read so it was a good time for that. Chapter 14, oh my gosh, we get the tie-in to the title. We get the title explained and I love that when that happens in a book. Actually all to do with a book and all to do with this modern sleep and the creatures and it was so interesting. I really enjoyed that and also how it's tying into Flynn and how everything's kind of sapping the Flynn which is then causing this series of events to happen and it's all coming about because of the pursuit of this perfection to be the perfect person. It was really interesting. I think you could explore it a little bit more in depth than how I've been reading it with looking into being human isn't about being perfect and I do feel like there's a lot of comments you could make about that in this and I think that was really interesting. Definitely something that if I was to do a reread of this that I could look into and maybe tab those areas of where that was happening and I've enjoyed that. My, I've definitely broken the spine of this book. Seeing how all of that ties in with the sleep that's going on, the pretty much evil doctor and their really misguided attempt of this ideal human and uh, we all know that never goes well. And then chapter 16 like it seems like all the even numbers in this there was just like plot twist after plot twist and i am keeping this like as spoiler free as possible it's more just letting you know these are the chapters where things were happening we get the reveals of who is behind everything like what is actually going on what happened with the grit what that was all about we get it all tying together and i really enjoyed it and then the very ending of this book is really bittersweet and i really liked it but what i enjoyed about this book is sometimes you can find with the first book in a series the ending doesn't actually wrap up the story that's been happening throughout the first book because even though it's the first of a series it should still have an ending a conclusion to what's happened and then open up the possibilities going forward for like the plot lines for the next book and it did that and I really appreciated that because we did get the mystery kind of wrapped up around the grit the plague everything that was going on around that and I enjoyed that but it still left it open to follow into the next book and where it's all going to progress from there. We also had a little bit of a romance sprinkled in this book. It was definitely not the focus of this story, but it was there a little bit and that is a bit bittersweet on the ending of that and I just, I enjoyed this. Honestly, I was expecting to have a good, like an okay book and this ended up being a good book, so it kind of exceeded my expectations for it and it does just work for that easy read, that YA nostalgia read read. It works for that. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. I think it was really good. And definitely, like I say, the second half of this book, definitely more ramped up with the anticipation, the reveals that were all happening, the way things all linked together. It was really good. I really, really liked it. And I liked Harriet as our main character, as our perspective of this book, questioning everything, questioning her own mindset and what's going on. I enjoyed all of that. And dreams were still quite a big factor in this. And that was something that I liked about that. I liked like dreams in book. I like the way that they can have little importance to what's happening but also showing the fears that our character has. Like I enjoyed all of that so yeah this was really good, really enjoyable but it does mean that we're going to be moving on to Troop of Shadows and I feel kind of bad <laughs> that Troop of Shadows is the next one because I enjoyed Mordok so much. I'm not sure how this one's gonna go because it is that classic YA but I could also really enjoy it because of that so you never know. I feel like 
both of these are more YA fantasy. I guess we'll see if this one actually is YA fantasy as well. Definitely to me, this one felt younger, so it'll be interesting to see if Troop of Shadows is also in that age range. But like I say, first I think we're gonna have some lunch and then we'll get started and I'll probably do what I did before and update you when I get halfway through and see what my thoughts are and go from there. But yeah, so far, a really good solid start. I feel so lazy today. It's been really nice just having this reading day, but it does make me feel tired, which doesn't really make sense. I don't know if anybody else gets that, but like where you're not doing much throughout the day and so you feel really like lazy and tired compared to if you'd been busier. Don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but lunch was lovely and I have made progress with the Troop of Shadows. So I'm now up to chapter 15, page 191. So about halfway through, which is where I wanted to update. This one's interesting. So we have multiple perspectives compared to Mordax and it's also a lot more fast paced. So this is actually a Western setting which is not normally my cup of tea I have to admit and it does mean that I'm not fully integrating with this book like I don't read western books I don't read that kind of setting it's a bit like um, urban fantasy it's not my favorite thing and um, western just kind of comes under that I suppose it's like anything with any books like with any genre I should say they're an umbrella for all the other little subgenres to do with like the settings and things going on and I find things like urban fantasy, westerns, things like that are not really my, my cup of tea, shall we say. This is interesting, like I say, it's got multiple perspectives. We actually start off with our human mercenary who is Copper or Cooper. Copper? So he's a human mercenary, you see he's in a bit of a bind right at the start and then the next chapter is Celine, our princess's perspective, so she's our outcast princess and you see those two actually meet really quickly. I wasn't expecting that but literally in chapter two they've met, she's kind of taken him captive and then they decide to strike up a bargain with one another. So it's literally in the first couple of chapters is kind of what's happening on the back here. You also get a sense for the discontent of her bodyguard. So the princess still has four bodyguards who are also different perspectives. So we have Anessa Zavis, I think I'm saying that right, probably not, Trislin. So they're bodyguards, they are black dancers, they are really formidable, but there is a lot of discontent, they're really frustrated with the way things are, especially because they're really hard done by, they are struggling to just make ends meet and day to day, as well as the fact that the princess is adamant on wanting to try and regain her throne. I will say this is really fast paced, like if we compare the two books, which obviously I'm doing because I'm reading them back to back, this is so much more fast paced, there's a lot more fight scenes, there's a lot of things going on. I can say that I am not this sort of a reader though. I actually kind of prefer Mordak. One, the setting that I preferred. I really liked the town, the little village setting and it also was a little bit slower paced than this. We had a bit of a build-up. It wasn't until halfway through the book that we started getting all the twists and turns and the pacing picked up a bit and I kind of preferred that. This is fast from the get-go. There is constant battles and fights and things going on and I get it but also I find it a little bit too fast paced for me. One thing that is really interesting though is the beings. So Celine herself is part of this race of people that are kind of like changelings, kind of like similar to like chameleons in a way. They are able to change their skin to blend in with their surroundings, making them very good assassins. And also their skin changes with their emotions. So they kind of have to have really good control. Otherwise you're showing off all your emotions and stuff. That makes for very bad politics. Being able to do all of that. So that's really interesting. I like that. It's not something I've seen too too much. I think the only other book recently that I read that in was The Library of Unbroken Worlds, or is it The Library of Broken Worlds? Um, it's a sci-fi book. I did end up DNF in that 
book, but one of the things that when they went into this kind of mind space, one of the abilities was the fact that our main character's emotions showed up on her skin and her skin would change colour from that. So it's interesting, it's not something I've come across too much, to be quite honest. But yeah, I'm liking it. It's definitely more fast paced. I would say it's a bit like, what am I trying to think of? Like, you know, like, um, you'll get like some anime fight scenes and that sort of thing. That's what this book is reading like. So I think if you like that sort of thing, you would enjoy this. For me, it's not particularly my cup of tea. As I've said, I'm really using that phrase mainly because I want another cup of tea. So I might, I might go make a cup of tea after this update. But yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm liking it. It's intriguing. I do think the writing on both these books, like I was going to do this more at the end once I've read both because that's one thing I find myself hesitant is that sometimes with indie authors I find myself a little bit hesitant because they don't have proper editors like or they may not have proper editors and so sometimes I find myself a little bit pernickety about things like that like I'm very picky when it comes to books like even published book to be fair more with published books actually because they have the publishing professional background behind them to be able to do all the editing making sure that all their timelines make sense things like that like I'm, I'm really sensitive to that sort of thing so I will pick up on it so I'm always a bit hesitant when it's an independently published author because obviously they haven't had that whole team behind them however with both of these books I'm really not finding that like I think the writing is good in both of these it's just this is not the setting I would normally go for. So at this point in time, I don't think I would continue on with the series, whereas the first book I would continue on with the series. This one, while still being fun, is just a little bit too plot heavy for me and I'm not quite gelling with it all. It's just, yeah, I think it's a little bit too fast for my personal taste, but it has made it for a really easy read. Like there's one thing for both of these books I can say is that they're really easy reads. One thing that I will say though is there is a lot of like shouty capitals in this book. I think that's going to be really showing. But there's a lot of times where capitals are used in this book and it just feels like they're shouting at me. And I find that a little bit off-putting. It's not something I see too often in books. That's it really. I mean, I like the fact that when we're changing perspectives we have this little three star in the page because it started off with a chapter would be one person's perspective but as we're meeting up with everyone we're getting to know all our characters we now have the perspective changing in the middle of a chapter but it is signified by those three stars which I really appreciate I like that so yeah I am liking this one I think it is well written it's just it's just just not my ideal like if I was to choose a book if I could only keep one of these books so far is Mordax but we'll see because the ending could be completely different but yeah okay I'm gonna get back to reading and maybe do that cup of tea I am kind of feeling it I don't know what tea I want normally I just drink chai latte I don't know what tea I want I have I think I've got a peppermint tea maybe and a licorice tea I don't know I'm rambling I feel like that's all these are I mean you're all used to it if you've been here before how much I ramble and stuff but anyway enough of the tangents I have a book to finish let's get this done and then I think at the end we'll do a proper overview of everything but so far I think this is great and I love the fact that your paper quest has introduced me to two authors that I would never have come across otherwise so I really appreciate that At the end I did finish reading Troop of Shadows and I enjoyed this book. I don't have as much to comment on. I've mentioned this quite a few times in past videos. When I find a book that's just like in the middle of the road for me I don't have loads to say about it. There was nothing particularly bad about this book. It's just the setting, 
the fact that it's a more plot based book, all of that isn't necessarily things that I enjoy. It wasn't bad either because I still enjoyed it, like it's a light fun read, it's fast paced and I do think if you are more of a plot driven reader you might enjoy this one a lot more. I do think I probably won't carry on, the ending didn't really sway me in any particular way. I do like the way it ended, I like the setup for the later books and so I'm enjoying that but not enough for me to continue on with this one although I'm still really pleased to have given it a try and that's something that I've liked about this book box that I got two different books like still the same genre still fantasy still exploring things that are kind of similar but just tackling it in two very different ways and I really enjoyed that I loved Mordax though this was for me out of the two this was the stronger book for me just the setting was exactly what I like I really enjoyed the pacing of it all I liked seeing our characters develop and honestly the nightmares the dream aspect of this was really good and I always enjoy that in a book so this just ticked all the boxes for me and I will be continuing on with this one I think especially when I'm on my early shifts and I I just want something that is very chill, doesn't require too much concentration but still has enough going on that I want to read on and want to know what's going to happen. And this one, yeah, like I say, it was okay. Does all the elements well, I'm just, it's not my personal preferences of what I like to read, but it was good to have the mix. So not only am I getting a book box subscription that is indie authors that I wouldn't have come across without this book box, but I've also got two very different takes and one of them pushes me outside my comfort zone. And I like that. I like this mix that they've chosen. I think they did a good choice with both of these. And I don't know, I just think it really worked. So I'm I'm really pleased with this reading day. And with being able to read and review these books for you as well. It's just been really, really good. I would highly recommend if you are in the UK and you're interested in supporting some indie authors, do check out your paper quest. I do think they're a really good subscription service, especially with all the benefits so you get two books totaling up to around 500 pages you get the bookmarks you get the little editions from the authors so if, for instance a poem in this one and a letter with this one and you also get the invite to the book club and you're able to actually talk to the authors as well as the monthly videos that they do talking to the authors more in depth. I think you're getting a lot and I do like it. Do you read much indie authors? Is it something you want to do more of? I think this has shown me that I definitely should try more. This has been great. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a really good time with all of this but I am going to stop for now. So thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, then let's put a envelope in the comments below. Thank you so much. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below as well, of course, your paper quest, their channel and everything. All of those details will be in the description. I will catch you in the very next video.